Hi, my name is Amedeo Beretta and welcome to part 5 of this series in which we improve the look of our animation by rendering it out in a real engine. In the previous video we learned how to better control volumetric fog. In this one we'll start populating the scene with dynamic elements by adding fireflies buzzing around the forest. The panther animation comes from my quadruped walk creature animation course. You can find the link in the description below. Before we start, there is a little bit of news. The channel now supports Super Thanks, so if you want to donate to support the channel, you can now do so through YouTube itself. In between recording videos, I took care of populating the foreground of my scene so that the foreground and the floor would look a little bit less dull and flat. To do so, I did use the Paint Foliage tool, which I employed just in the same way you have seen in the first video of this series. As I said, it would be nice to add some dynamic effects to the scene, like fireflies, for instance, like these fireflies we see on screen in here. We are going to make these fireflies on our own using Niagara. Now, I don't really need to see the foliage, so we'll go under Show, Foliage Type, Hide All. Just to make my work a little bit easier, I'm going to hide the fog volumes, as well as the exponential height fog, as well as the foliage. We just select it and press H. I haven't found a way to call it back, really. And in my case now the show and hide foliage types doesn't even work, so I don't know what's going on in there. But if you save the map and reopen it, the foliage will come back. It's also a shame that it's nowhere to be visible in the outliner. Speaking of which, we probably want to put some order into it, and we can put all the assets we laid down as a foreground into their own folder, which I'm going to call FG and stands for environment, of course. I'm also going to add them. So let's do our fireflies, and I will create a fireflies folder. That's the folder that will contain my fireflies. And we're going to create a new Niagara system. So right click into the content browser, Niagara system. And we're going to create an empty one, the bottom one from the list. We hit finish. Let's name it Fireflies NG. The name doesn't really matter for as long as you remember it. I'm going to open it and Sure enough, there's not going to be a single particle in the scene. If we want to have particles, we need to first emit them. So I'm going to right click in the work area and I'm going to add emitter there. We could start from scratch, but really we have presets. In my case, the fifth preset from the top is called hanging particulates. And that seems to be our man, if you think of it, it already does it for us. And this seems to be the technique we want to employ. That's easy, really. Let's tweak it a little bit. First of all, we might want the life of the particles to be a little bit shorter. And you can find this attribute under the particle spawn section. There is initialize particle, you click on it. And on the attribute editor on the right hand side, you have the lifetime. By default, this is set to random in this preset. That means that the lifetime will be randomly chosen between a minimum and maximum value. Right now it's five to eight seconds. But if we put one to three seconds, for instance, we should get particles that disappear a lot quicker, you see? A little bit more like fireflies. If you wanted to increase the number of particles being produced, you can visit the emitter update section and under the spawn rate, you will find that a new attribute opens up on the right, which is called spawn rate. We can set the spawn rate to be maybe 500 and you will see a lot more particles being produced, but maybe that's too many. So I will do maybe 150. That's maybe too many still. So I'm going to go for a hundred. What's the right number of fireflies in your scene? Depends largely on your taste. So I'm going to stay with 100. If you visit the initialize particle section under particle spawn, you will find that apart from the lifetime, we also have sprite attributes like the sprite size, for instance, which right now is ranging between 2 and 3.5. What this really means in relation to our environment, you will only know once you put the emitter in the environment itself. So let's maybe save this effect, close it for a second and drag it into the scene. There you go. Those are my fireflies there. And if we look at things through the camera, you see that we have fireflies in there. Now there is a bit of a catch indeed. By default, these Niagara particles do not react to depth of field, so they won't be blurred based on their distance from the camera. Particles can be set up to behave as if they were under the effect of Dolph, but this is a further step we won't be doing in this tutorial. The particle system can be translated around to change the position of the particles themselves. It can also be scaled via the attributes editor as the emitter shape will automatically adapt to the scale value. 
This is quite useful indeed, which makes me think that the shape location node that we find under the particles spawn section of our Niagara system is something we could have used earlier on for our fog, but that ship has sailed. I think these particles would look a little bit nicer if they were moving around as if they had a life of their own. To do that, we can go under the particle update section, under which you see we have a stack of commands that are regulating the movement of the particles. For instance, if I were to disable the curl noise force, the particles would no longer move around. So this is indeed the section in which you want to put forces in order to move around your particles. The one important thing that you need to have at the bottom of the stack is an operation called solve forces and velocity. So for instance, if we disable it, you will find out that a red dot appears next to the operations that required that solve force operation. So you see in here the curl noise and the drag in particular are no longer effective. So this is something to keep in mind. So next to particle update on the right, we click on the green plus icon and we type in vector and we find vector noise force. We are going to create this operation. We make sure it's above the solve forces and velocity. And now the particles are already moving a lot better. We can give it a lot higher speed. You see now they're way more active. They tend to look a little bit more like mosquitoes, to be honest. And then we can create some random noise so that some of them will move at a certain speed while some other will move at another speed. That should give an idea of organicity to the movement. Maybe we'll reduce the force amount to something like 300 just to make it a little bit subtler. Now you see that as the particles approach the end of their life, they scale down and lose opacity progressively. Maybe we could even change the color just to see how that's done. That's probably something we can add under particles update if you think of it. If we click on the plus next to it, we can type in scale and indeed we find scale color and scale color by speed. We're going to grab scale color and the most attentive among you will have noticed that we already had a scale color in there and if we go into the original scale color you find a curve. This curve is the curve for the scale alpha and if we grab the beginning of the curve and we drag it up you will find out that the particles are spawning already at full opacity and then they gently fade away while if we drag the end of this curve the particles will appear suddenly and they also will disappear suddenly. So in practice on the left hand side of the curve you have the beginning of the lifetime of the particle on the right hand side you have the end. So a curve with both the end and the beginning set to zero will have invisible particles spawning they will gradually gain opacity and then they will disappear. If you click on the plus button under the curve you can add another key and you can have your particles last for a little bit longer. So now the particles will stay there so in relation to their own life the particles will spend more time being visible. If we wanted to also scale the color we could grab the new scale color node we created. Remember that this stack is evaluated from the top to the bottom. So the last node being evaluated is the scale color which we can put under the solve forces and velocity because after all it's not a physical node. In here under the scale mode we are going to set RGBA linear color curve and this gives you a ramp. If we click on one of the top swatch we can then right click and choose color and for now just for the sake of demonstration I'm going to give it a reddish color there and you will see that the particles will start red and within the course of the lifetime they will become white and transparent. So maybe I can pick a brighter yellowish color and then towards the end of the life of these particles they will become maybe a little bit more reddish. There you go. Let's go back under initialize particle and let's maybe reduce the sprite size to 1.5 to 3 min and max sprite size that is. We save, close and it seems to me they're still too big so we are going to open up again the system and under initialized particle we're going to put a much smaller size so so dot five and one dot five respectively. That should give us a much smaller bunch of fireflies in there. Indeed here they are. Let's have a look at them in the context of the camera. They may be a little bit too many for the space they occupy but the size seems to be all right. So I'm going to go back into perspective and maybe I can place the volume right where the panther is going. I can scale it up real big on the Y so that you see it will extend along the walk path of the panther and I can translate it so that it makes a continuous line. And now I can check again the animation from the camera point of view. By hitting F11 on your keyboard you can have a look at the animation full screen. 
And now you see that at the beginning we don't see many fireflies, but then there is more and more. I think we can introduce a little bit more variation on the firefly size. And also I think we can maybe move them a little bit more away from the ground because sometimes it feels like they fly into the ground and they look a little bit like ashes. So I'm going to hit F11 to go back from the full screen mode. And in the Niagara system under initialized particles, I'm going to set the sprite size minimum value to say dot eight a little bit bigger and the maximum value i'm going to make it quite big like four that should give me a little bit more variation in the fireflies and if i now play the animation you see that some of them are significantly bigger than others i think maybe we don't want them to scale smaller as time goes by because the scaling down doesn't quite look like fireflies switching the light off so to speak so if i go under scale sprite size in my emitter you see that in here the particle scales down as it disappears so maybe i can have it scaled down a little bit smaller but i don't want it to become that small let's try again and also as i said i want to lift up the volume and maybe scale it down vertically so that particles won't fly too close to the terrain because again I don't want them to look like they are going down into the terrain I want them to stay a little bit higher in the air then I can grab the emitter and I can duplicate it to make another emitter at, at a later stage and you know what and maybe under initialized particles I'm actually going to put a very high number for the max sprite size just to see if I can simulate depth of field in a way and I'm also going to increase the vector noise force a little bit just to make them a little bit more mobile removing the drag actually makes the particles a lot more active so I'm going to try that and then I'm going to check the result Now that I do have fireflies in my scene, I feel like it would look a lot nicer if some other parts of the forest were a little bit more dynamic. So in the next video we are going to add trees with rustling leaves and falling leaves, and birds flying through the forest. Also now the channel supports super thanks from YouTube, so you can support the channel via YouTube itself, should you want to. And that's it for today, I hope you have found this useful and if that's the case, please consider sharing, liking, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Have fun!